Sometimes when you're moving shapes with your mouse, it tends to jump to rather large increments. And so what's quite handy sometimes is just to use your arrow keys on your keyboard. You can use the arrow keys, or some people like to use shift arrow, but when I hit the right arrow, it just nudges it a little bit to the right. And when I hit the left arrow, it nudges it a little bit to the left. And I know I'm in the right position when the line above, the connector line, straightens completely out. So remember, you can always use your arrow keys. The other thing you can do with shapes is you can rotate shapes. You can rotate them manually using your mouse by placing the mouse on the little circle that appears at the above of the shape. When I drag this little circle, I'm rotating the shape to the left or rotating the shape to the right. So that's possible as well. If you don't want to rotate the shape using your mouse, you can actually use the position button, which you'll find on the home tab in the ribbon and in the arrange group. The position button, when clicked, offers the option rotate shapes. And you can rotate 90 degrees, left 90 degrees, flip it vertical or flip it horizontal. So you can also rotate shapes and rotate diagrams, depending on the shape you have selected. The other thing I'd like to bring up is what they call the size and position window. If you go to the view tab in the ribbon and you go to the show group and the task panes button, you'll have an option to choose called size and position. So I'm going to click this. And here is the size and position window for the particular shape called process 7. So process 7 is this, the name of the shape here. When I click on this shape, this is decision 6 and this is decision. So if I go back to this particular shape here, process 7, what we've got is x, y, width and height, angle. What the x and y are, are they are the vertical and the horizontal position of that shape on the page. So as I nudge the shape to the right using my arrow keys, you can see that the x position is changing. So the x is the horizontal position on the page, and I can move it back. When I move the shape up using the up arrow, I can see that the Y position is changing. And so the Y is actually the vertical position using the ruler and particularly the zero being at the bottom of the page, which we discussed earlier, the zero position. And so I'm moving it up and down and I'm controlling the Y position on the page. Now what you can also do is you can change the width and height of a shape and this is particularly useful if you've got a number of shapes and at a later date you find that those shapes aren't the same height and width. For example, I've got this shape selected. If I hold the shift and select this shape as well, I can see that they're both 35 millimeters wide and 46 millimeters high. But if I wanted to change the height of both the shapes equally, I change the height from 46 to maybe 50 millimeters and just press enter. And you can see they've both gone to 50 millimeters. So if you want to uniformly change the width and the height of shapes, you can do so. Let's say I click on this shape, hold the shift and click on this shape and this shape, and I want to make them universally wider. So I'll change the width from 45 to maybe 50 millimeters. And now they're all 55 millimeters wide. And I might change the height to say 30. And now all three of them are 30 millimeters high. So this is a very handy window when you want to set those sort of settings. Now this window, in the same way as we move the pan and zoom, you can move the size and position just by dragging with your mouse, dragging it by its title. You can also, just like the pan and zoom window, close it by hitting this X. And if you want to get it back, just go to the view tab in the ribbon and the task panes button and bring back the size and position window. You can also right click this particular size and position heading and you can tell it to dock it. And so now what it's done is it's docked it above the stencils on the left hand side of my screen. And if I right click or I drag it, I can effectively float it again. And so it's floating again, just like the pan and zoom window. Now after a while, some of these little task panes start to take up too much screen. So we like to merge them. To merge these two windows, I'll just drag the size and position and drop it onto the pan and zoom. And these two now are merged together. And how I move between the two windows is just by clicking this little option at the bottom here. 
So you can easily get them to sit on top of each other and share the amount of, same amount of space. If I want to unmerge these two, then I'll simply drag the size and position off, whoops, drag it off by its tab at the bottom. So I've just pulled the size and position off. If I drag it back on, I've merged them. If I drag it by its name here, off, I've unmerged them. So it's quite easy to do that. So I'm going to merge these two and have them permanently sitting just up here on my screen. Now notice when I drag it also that there's a little pin appearing on the right hand side as I just drag it towards the right hand side of my screen. What I can do is I can pin it and so basically it'll automatically hide when it's not in use and as soon as I rest on it it comes back up. So this is actually called the turn off auto hide and now it's turn on auto hide. So auto hide is also very useful if you don't want it to take up a lot of space unless you rest on it and then it pops back out again. But I'm actually going to turn off the auto hide by hitting the pin so that it's always visible for me to use.